Hey everybody, how's it going? I hope you're having a lovely day. So today I wanted to talk about a sign that we are winning. So when it comes to this Colorado right to repair bill, many people have said, you know, maybe this is a poison pill, maybe it doesn't get passed, maybe there's a dirty trick that's going to happen at the end. And the reason I don't think that's going to happen are the reactions that you're getting from certain people. So for instance, just let's just give a basic rule when it comes to these types of reactions. Hypothetically, let's say that a right to repair bill passes and a right to repair activist makes a video with a title like this and drinks a bottle of Ciroc on stream at one in the morning. It might just mean that he lost. Conversely, if you have the CEO of the Equipment Dealers Association, or here the Far West Equipment Dealers Association, representing dealerships going on Twitter and crying, it might just mean that we are winning. If the Dealers Association doesn't like this bill, then that means that farmers are really going to like this bill. And if he's this mad about it, it means that he, he's mad because it actually has a chance of passing, unlike all these other bills that have been ki get, getting killed in all these other states. People don't get mad like this over legislation that has zero chance of passing. They get mad about legislation with teeth that is going to actually give farmers and their customers the freedom to do business without them, which is something that I am in favor of. Now, I wanted to read this over here and go over why I thought it was ridiculous. So what does it say? Brianna for Colorado and right to repair proponents spread the hashtag big lie that farmers cannot repair their equipment. The real issue is a labor shortage. This bill does nothing to fix that. This is about being the first to pass bad policy. Hashtag shameless politicians. Be a real journalist and stop regurgitating what bias sources tell you. You're supposed to be objective and educate yourself on the topics you write instead of producing puff pieces to perpetuate their propaganda. You mad, bro? He's mad. And that's fine. He's mad because they're finally losing after years upon years of winning by screwing over the customer. So when it comes to this, let's just go over a couple of things here. The first thing, the hashtag big lie thing. Like He's, he's really trying to invoke Trump's stolen election January 6th. All, all the aggravation and anger and pile up on that. He's trying to like use that here. He's trying to invoke that here. Like, no. Just no, people see through that. that that's, that's lame. These are completely separate issues. And no, I mean, now if you want to actually talk about lies, we have several documents that go over in great detail all of the ways in which John Deere and dealers have screwed their customers, have screwed the farmers when it comes to being able to fix their own stuff. This is an organization called US Perg. I have given a lot to them over the years because back in the day before I had any lobbying money, I noticed that when I would travel out to legislatures in the middle of Maine and only one person would show up that was pro repair, that person was them. So before there was much money involved, they were always showing up to state legislatures and always putting their part in and always had good testimony and were always good organizers. So this is a document called Deer in the Headlights. And this is a follow up that they were able to make that's twice as long after I donated them a substantial amount of money to be able to actually do research on this. And what they do is they research all the ways in which farmers are getting screwed. And then you can go to the end of the document and it will actually have professional grade citations if my hotel internet will actually load them. There we go. So you have all all the citations here that go over all the instances so you can read up on exactly how they're getting screwed. Or if you're interested, you can listen to interviews on my channel. Kevin Kenny is an absolute awesome farmer. I have a two hour interview with him here. I spoke with Jared Wilson here about why the past memorandum of understanding were absolutely useless. So you have all the information there if you want to actually figure out who is lying, whether it is John Deere that's lying or whether it is farmers that lying. I tend to be on the side that believe that the dealerships in John Deere are lying, not the farmers, because I've actually spoken to them and I have read all of these documents. But more importantly, let's just get into the crux of his argument, that this is a labor shortage. That's the problem. It's a labor shortage. Let me just read what I wrote on my community page when this came out. The shortage of technicians available to visit the farm and plug the dealership computer into the tractor is not the problem. The fact that this is necessary to finish a repair to begin with is the problem. If I buy something that doesn't work after I fix it until I get the blessing of the manufacturer, do I really own it? This just comes off as rent-seeking to me. That's how I see it. Again, when you just and let's just even get to the labor shortage thing. A, there's not a labor shortage. You, you just you should just pay more. So for instance, like I my staff my store is fully staffed at all times. I do not have a labor shortage. I have not had a labor shortage in 13 years. The reason I don't have labor shortages at my store is because if you look at the starting salary for a manager at a you break I fix, and then you look at the salary of a manager at my store, you may notice that the salary at my store is over double that one. You made like even for the lower level positions, we pay 30 to 50 percent more than almost every other competing business, which means that when I have an issue with a lack of staff, well, actually, I don't have an issue with a lack of staff because I just hire them because I can find them. Maybe maybe you're paying shit, but the, regardless of that, regardless of that, this is not about a labor shortage. This is about the fact that you should not need that to begin with. 
Let's say that your dealer has zero people willing to work for it. Let's say that you're willing to pay $300 an hour and nobody's willing to work as a dealership technician. That shouldn't matter. If I do a repair on my product, I should not need you. I should not have to pay you to drive out to my farm, plug your stupid little dealer computer into my tractor, and allow it to work again. Like that, in, in, in my opinion, that is bullshit, and that is rent-seeking, and that is wrong. And what we're seeking to do here is give farmers freedom to not have to deal with you when they have purchased something that is a quarter of a million dollars, which I think is a very reasonable thing. Now, let's get to a second accusation that I heard on Twitter. I'm going to respect the fact that this person has deleted their tweets and all of them and not posted here, but somebody was implying that all of this stuff is being done for my personal financial gain. Um, and they were also citing my nonprofit since my nonprofits, as I said, have donated quite a bit to the people who have been writing these amazingly well thought out documents. Again, you know, I do a lot of yelling and screaming on YouTube, but it's really nice when the yelling and screaming on YouTube is actually backed up with uh, well cited and well researched documents from people that I've interviewed on the channel before. Uh, the folks from U.S. Perk are pretty great. I have some interviews here, interviews here, and you can follow them on Twitter. They're really cool people. I will leave some links to all of that down below. There was a, this accusation that all of this, like my nonprofit, is solely to uh, put money in my pocket. So here's what we're going to do. There's two things I'm going to do here. So I'm going to publish all of my bank statements within the next month for the nonprofit going back about three years. And what I'd also like is some input from you all on a system that I can put together so that if you have a question about a transaction, you can say like this transaction name on this date, and then I can fill it in and just explain like, here's why, here's what it is. And more importantly, here's why I saw the need to spend this money in this way. So you'll be able to see that I have taken zero dollars from my nonprofit over the past three years. I don't pay myself any salary. It's I'm not I'm not doing the whole zero salary thing, but I go on vacations and fly in private jets around the country on it or anything like that. But more importantly, you'll get to ask questions about exactly what it is I'm doing. I was going to do a Google spreadsheet that was open to the public, but obviously if I do that, some vandalizer can come in and just delete everything. So I don't really know what system I should use for this. But if you have any inputs, please do put it in the comments down below. Lastly, if I'm going to get accused of it, I might as well have some fun. So here we are with a, a new set of merchandise here at the Rossman Group YouTube store. This is a mug that says dealership tears, because again, the dealers do seem to be uh, crying here and they do seem to want attention for their crying so i would like to give it to them for the low low price of 15.99 you too can have a dealership tears mug that you can fill up with dealership tears i'm learning a little bit more from ben shapiro than linus and how to do the merchandising but you know better late than never that's it for today and as always i hope you learned something i'll see you all in the next video bye now